Hey everybody, we're at Breakfast with Bob. My name is Bob Babbitt. We are brought to you by Velofix, Polar, You Can, Active, Premium Plus Sports Travel, La Cicle Restaurant at Hotel West End. Our guest is the 2019 ITU World Paratriathlon Champion. How about a round of applause for that? Lauren Parker. Thank you. Hi, Thank Lauren. You. How are you? Good, thanks. So yeah. good to see you. Congratulations. What did it feel like getting, because you've been on the podium a lot of times, but winning, that had to be pretty special, especially in Lausanne. Yeah, very special, especially, especially when I had, you know, most of my team around me, Brad and, and family and friends, and, you know, words can't describe how I was feeling. I was, I was just so happy and relieved, and I'd put in so much work for that moment. Right. Uh, over a year's work, and... Yeah, I was just I was just, I was just stoked to take the win. One of the things I saw yesterday for the first time was your tattoo, and I just show that to the camera. And so, Kia Kaha, and what does that mean? Kia Kaha means forever strong, and one of my friends gave me those words uh, when I was initially in hospital after my accident, and she's from New Zealand, so it's Maori. And those words really stuck with me and um, really meant a lot to me. So, yeah, I decided to get a, a, a tattoo on, on my arm with a red feather, which means strength and vitality and health. So, I think it was 2015, were you on the podium in Kona yeah. as an age group yeah. athlete? Second, yeah. Second, uh, got the silver medal in the 25-29? Yeah. And you're riding high, you just, you're going to go pro. The following year, 2016, yep. you race as a pro in 2016, yep. training to do your first full Ironman, 2017, April 18th, 2017, your life changes forever, which is why Kia Kaha became important to you. Yep. Talk a little bit about what happened. With my accident, uh, yeah, so I was training for Ironman Australia in yeah. Port Macquarie and I had the, the best preparation I'd ever had because I've, I've had a lot of injuries over my many years of doing triathlon and this particular preparation I had no injuries I had you know I was training so well and yeah. riding the fastest I've ever ridden and uh, yeah two weeks out from Ironman Australia I, both my tires burst and I went flying into a guardrail at 45k an hour uh, obviously breaking my back and spinal cord but I had other injuries like a punctured lung broken ribs broken pelvis broken shoulder but yeah, um, but my my life changed in, in just an that instant. split second. And I, initially, I didn't think uh, you know I thought that I'd just be taken to hospital. I'd uh, get fixed up and I'd be walking out. But right. that wasn't the case. On that same day, I was told I'd I'd never walk again. And I remember the doctor said something like, you know, you you're lucky because you're T12, which means you have use of your abs. Yeah. But when you're told you'll never walk again, you didn't feel very lucky. I definitely didn't feel lucky at that point, but I soon uh, realized what he was actually talking about. When I, uh, after hospital, after spending three months in hospital, I then went to rehab for three months, and that's where I, I really learned that I actually was lucky because there was like 20 year old kids in there that were quadriplegics that couldn't right. use their arms, that had to be fed um, by couldn't, other people. Their, and, their hands didn't function. Yeah. Right, and so uh, you had. You, when you're exposed to that, you realize, I've got, I've got, maybe I am lucky. Yeah, definitely. I had to, yeah, look at the positives and, right. and rather than the negatives, and that's how I overcome, you know, my, the circumstances. Yeah. So we first met over the phone, uh, and I think it was in June or July of that summer. Yeah. And we talked about triathlon and talked about the accident and. You mentioned that triathlon was still important to you yep. and that you had already, I think, looked around about paratriathlon. The triathlon was a, uh, was a sport that you potentially could stay involved with. And then during that call, we decided that it would be good for you to come to San Diego, yep. San Diego Triathlon Challenge. Talk a little about that experience because now I'm sure that you didn't grow up knowing a lot of people in wheelchairs or no. people were missing limbs. And here you are at the San Diego Triathlon Challenge, our, our big weekend for CAF, and there's 150 people out there, missing limbs, quadriplegics. What was that weekend like for you? 
uh, that weekend actually blew me away. Like I thought I was going to turn up to San Diego and tell you and, and everyone else about my story and what I'd been through, but that certainly wasn't the case because I what I witnessed that weekend really changed how I perceived my own life and and you know there was kids running around with smiles on their faces that were in worse worse off positions than me and and yeah it, it gave me hope and it that's where I got the inspiration for triathlon back again it was from that weekend and you know I thought that if these kids could do it and right. could participate in in the in the triathlon, then so could I. I, I remember we, we had you come to that Thursday evening is when we have all the brand new kids, like the kids who are brand new to CAF, so the parents can find out about, they can meet other parents and find out what, what's possible for their children. And I wanted you there because basically you were like them. You were brand new yeah. to this whole world and you're seeing some kids missing arms and legs who are on little cars and just scooting around on their bottoms and just happy uh, they're kids they're playing tag yeah and that that you could see i could just see the wheels going in your head thinking oh my god these kids are happy i yeah. i could be happy yeah Definitely. and and sport gave you that and triathlon gave you that yeah i mean triathlon is what has saved me really um it has given me the happiness back again and and it allows me to continue doing what i love and and keep keeping fit and racing and training and that's you know what what I want to be doing and if I didn't have that in my life I, I really don't know where I'd be and CAF uh, started that journey for me and if I didn't have that support then yeah I'd, again I don't know where I'd be. I remember the Friday night at Celebration of Abilities and it's still a moment that uh, chokes me up but we told your story in front of 700 people and I don't think you knew that was going to happen. And everybody in that room stood up and basically a, was, they gave you a standing ovation knowing that your journey was just starting. Yeah. And that moment is something that I'm guessing you draw on. Yeah, that moment I'll, I'll never forget. And that was quite emotional. And, I, and, you know, I felt very special to have people that don't didn't even know me right. actually stand up and applaud me um, for what I'd been through. So the next step was actually getting in the paratriathlon. Yeah. And if we think there's a lot of equipment in triathlon, yeah. you need a roadie to be a paratriathlete because you need your hand cycle, you need a racing chair, you need your spare wheels, you need your everyday chair. There's a lot of stuff going yeah. on. Yeah. And what was the hardest part for you? The, you know, the, the hand cycle, learning how, actually in swimming, I think Alan Voissard, our swim coach, helped you a little bit there, yeah. figuring out where to put the cord and everything. Learning the sport, even though you were a professional triathlete, this was a different game. It was so different and, and so difficult. You know, coming from a swimming background, swimming uh, like 16K a day when I was younger. Yeah. Like swimming fast to now having to learn how to swim without any legs and you feel like half your body's sinking it was very difficult. and both mentally and physically but um, I, I soon you know got used to it and learned how to change my body position mm -hmm. and yeah I, yeah that that's brought me to where I am now but the racing chair has definitely been a difficult that's one hard, yeah that's right? the, the run yeah. it's like you're in a like you're shoehorned into this thing yeah and your knees are up here and it's yeah it's, it's very technical and I was talking to a, a, a teammate of mine Kurt Fernley and yes. he said it takes a few years to actually master the technique and and it'll take me a few chairs to actually get the correct position right. um and that's what i'm still i'm still trying to trying yes. to get to get that optimal uh position and i think the other thing people don't realize is it's not like paratriathlon equipment is cheaper like if you want to go running you get a pair of running shoes you yeah. spend 100 bucks yeah you need a racing chair it's five thousand dollars yeah and you need a hand cycle it's ten thousand dollars it's that equipment, just getting that is, and without that equipment, you can't participate. Yeah, exactly. And you know, when I when I'm traveling, you have to be very careful uh, about it, it getting damaged because it's not easy to get. Um, Nobody knows how to work on that stuff. Yeah, yeah, fixed or get parts. It's not like you can go to a, a bike shop and, and buy a brand new bike. But um, yeah, you know, I thought it was hard enough traveling with a, a, a normal bike, but now I've got 
a, a hand cycle and a racing chair, luggage, my own chair, but I don't have to carry none of it. <laughs> Brad has to carry You've all got of it. Brad. Now, talk a little bit about Brad, because Brad was a training friend before the accident, yeah. and he has been your domestique professional, yeah. right, since then. How special has he been in your life? So special from day one when we first met, and he really wanted to help me, and he believed in me and, and, and my goals that I wanted to achieve right from day one. And for the, the 12 years I'd know, I've known him, he's just been my rock. And without him, I wouldn't be where I am doing triathlon today. And I wouldn't have achieved what I've achieved over the last 12 years without him. And he's very special, like a, like a dad to me. So now you're for October of 2000, uh, 2018 um, or 17. So you're now your accident was in April, your October SDTC. Now you're starting to get equipment, right? And now we're into 2018, and the Commonwealth Games are coming up in April of 2018. I don't think it was a full year since no, your accident. It was 11 months. And 11 yeah, months yeah. from your accident, and going to, just being at the starting line. Did that feel surreal? Just being there? Definitely. I mean, I didn't even imagine that I would be. You know, on the start line at the Commonwealth Games in under a year of my accident, especially when I was laying in that hospital bed, I didn't yeah. even think that I'd get back to doing triathlon again, let alone being at the Commonwealth Games and, uh, you know, wearing the um, Australian colours. Your colours, and representing yeah, your country. It was, I, was, I was, yeah, very proud to, to just be there and, you know, to come away with a bronze medal in... You know, with only a, a few months of, of training yes. in the new equipment, yeah, I couldn't have asked for anything more. So you get a bronze there, you get a bronze the world championship, yep. and everything is moving along great. Um, the racing and the training and people cheering, what people don't see is when you're at home and you're by yourself and yep. you're a young girl in a wheelchair. How hard has that been for you to deal with? Uh, very difficult. Um, everyone sees me, you know, happy and smiling and doing what I, I love to do and achieving, you know, everything that I've achieved. But, yeah, people don't see uh, the hard stuff. The hard and, stuff, right. You know, that, I mean, pain 24-7 with nerve pain throughout my body. And it's that's the most difficult part. You know, I'd rather have that pain uh, go away than to walk again like it's that bad the pain is just constant yeah, yeah. all the time yeah and then going into this year it's not like you've gone through enough but then all of a sudden you got fluid build up in your spine and you're starting to lose feeling in your hands uh, that yeah well that was last year i've last had like five spinal surgeries in the in yeah, 18 months. But, five, uh, yeah. five spinal surgeries primarily because of the, the fluid. Yeah, and last year, August last year, I started losing feeling down my right arm and, and losing strength in my hand and my injury level uh, rose yeah. up a little bit and that was because of the fluid build up in my spine and I had to be rushed into an eight hour surgery uh, to get all that drained out but I never regained the feeling a strip down my right arm. It and, still hasn't come back? No. And they, they thought it would? Yeah, they... They, they kept saying, yeah. yeah, it's going to come back. Yeah. Easy for doctors to say. Yeah. <laughs> and then this year in March, I had to go in for another spinal surgery to get the hardware taken out of my back because I was I was in severe back pain right, all, the, all time. the time. Yeah. And there's really nothing because you're a professional athlete. It's not like you can really take anything for that that could potentially test positive, right? Yeah, no. Yeah. No. Um, the build up to this year the world championships you've had even dealing with that stuff you had to go race i mean there are times where you were coming out of the hospital and what, a week or two after being out of the hospital you were racing yeah yeah i mean um all i wanted to do is get back to racing and training yes uh, as soon as i could after surgery and yeah that's what i've i've been doing and and then you're sort of starting over, right? Because yeah. you've gotten to a certain point in the racing chair in the hand cycle that you're going this fast. Yeah. And now you're and back you here again. have to start again. again. So you're constantly taking stu two steps forward and then one step back. Um, but hopefully from here on, I can keep just yes. keep going forward. And yeah, I had the, a really good preparation leading into the world champs. In Lausanne. Yeah. yeah. And, and yeah, that paid off. And, the, and you had people there? 
who was who was there for you in Lausanne? Yeah, you had Brad so I had there. Brad, um, some special friends, Chris and Sarah Gardner. Yeah. They came over from Australia, and my handler Robbo um, yeah. and his family, and also my mum. Oh, well. your mom She came. was able to come over from Australia for the week. And had she and watched you race much? Not a lot, but um, it was a special one. She was very proud to be there. That is very yeah. cool. And so you go to Lausanne, and did you have a gut that okay, I could win this race? Because it's a, this is a challenging course in Lausanne, yeah. which yeah. F- suits you. Yeah. Right? You like it to be hard. Yeah, I love the hills, and uh, I definitely love a challenging technical course. Not on the run though. I, uh, you know, I prefer a flat run, and I'm right. lucky that it was a flat run. Okay. But um, yeah, I was really positive going into the race. I, in the back of my mind, I, I knew that. You know, if everything went well and if I stayed positive, that I, I knew knew that I could win it. And um, yeah, that just from the, as soon as the gun went, I felt great in the water. I had the best swim that I'd ever had, and yeah, I was in good spirits going onto the bike. And yeah. I just yeah pushed so hard. And on on the run with with that last lap to go, I was able to actually celebrate. You know, I knew that I you knew you had it had it yeah. And coming across that line, knowing that. I mean, your journey from April 18, 2017 to now, now you're world champion. And I tell people all the time the key is for someone to come back is getting them into sport quickly, that people underestimate the power of sport. And I think you're a living, breathing example of the power of sport because sport really helped you get get back, right? Yeah. Become the Lauren Parker you want to be. Yeah, definitely. Sport has been amazing and it, it's definitely saved me. And I think, yeah, everyone that goes through an injury like I have really needs to get, you know, into sport or get involved in some way in, in sport. It makes a difference. The other thing that's happened over the last year is you are the only challenged athlete that's part of the Bahrain endurance team, and which means you're a salaried athlete. You're a professional athlete, yeah. which is what you should be. And that's really cool yeah so cool I'm very um, lucky and very honored to be part of the team I've uh, followed the team over the past few years as you know as an able-bodied athlete and I've looked up to the athletes that have been a part of the team for for years and I never you know expected to be stand you know alongside those athletes exactly. you know ever so I'm I'm very proud and I was I'm very you know proud that I could Take, get the win for them in Lausanne. Did you get some notes from those folks? Because you've got, you know, what you, you've you've got uh, Brownlee and you got Daniela Reef and are yep. your teammates reaching out and congratulating you? Yes, definitely. So sending the me biggest names in the sport are sending you yeah, messages. Yeah, and the, and the prince sent me a beautiful message. That's very which cool. Which is great. Yeah. That's yeah, very cool. So now you've got <laughs> you've got Benyolis this weekend. Yeah. Another race, and then we're you know we're less than a year from the Olympics and Paralympics. Yeah. And that's the yeah. goal. That that's yeah my goal uh, from here on, and you, you know I want to get that gold medal at Tokyo, and you know um, yeah next year is going to be a very busy year with yes. racing and, and training for it. But I'm but looking forward to it. Yeah, definitely. The busier the better. Yeah, but I'm I'm doing Bahrain 70.3 in December of oh, this year. Wait a yeah, second, because yeah. uh, you are an Ironman gal. So is that something yeah. down the line you want to get back to? I know you were in Kona last year, but I don't think you did any training on the course. I did a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. This year you're going to do more. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm going going to be in Kona this year. You know, going over the course on the hand cycle and yeah. getting to know it in a different way. You right. know, you know, using my You know my the course, arms, but not so, yeah, yeah, it's a totally different yeah. game love it lauren thank you for for doing what you're doing because i'm get i'm guessing you get kids reaching out now who are saying hey you know or parents reaching out saying my child is paralyzed yeah. and i want you to be a role model for yeah. them how important is that to you so important like it, it it makes me feel special that i could actually that i can actually make a difference in other people's lives in other children's lives and give them hope and and you know i've had so many messages from kids and parents and yeah. saying that you know i'm their kids hero like yes. that means so that much surprise to me you? and yeah i didn't expect ex- you know expect that i could be that influential in someone's life and you know it makes me 
feel like that it's all been worth it. You know, if I could just make a difference to one child's life, then it's all been worth it. That's what it's all about. Lauren, thank you so much for taking time. Uh, And good luck this weekend in Banyolas. How about our ITU world champion, Lauren Parker? Thank Thank you, Lauren. Thank you.